Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Abby Dubasar, and I'm a professor in the English department, and I also have affiliate faculty status in women and gender studies and in the sustainable agriculture pro program. And those multiple identities that I get to embody in doing the great work that I enjoy doing here at Iowa State are representative of my title here, Farmer Woman Persuader. So I'm going to talk today about some preliminary findings from an interview study that I'm conducting that just started this past fall. And this is a multi-year study, and it's based on interviews with any individuals who both identify as women and as farmers, including folks in Iowa and, by, and beyond. So I'm very interested in how these three identities overlap, how they work together, and I've done 16 interviews so far, and my goal is to do 100 interviews. And I'll remind you this, of this at the end of my talk, but if you identify as a woman and a farmer or know anyone who does, I hope you'll encourage them to contact me to participate in my study. So here are the research questions um, really broadly is, that I'm thinking about. The top two are what persuasive strategies do people use to identify as women and farmers? And I have several published studies about how in discursive means, writing, speaking, other historical documents, can we see women talking about farming in very specifically gendered ways in order to solve problems, in order to gain autonomy, lots of different reasons. So I'm very interested in how contemporary practitioners um, do this. And also, secondly, how does gender matter to these strategies? Um, and so as a humanities researcher, I'm informed by grounded theory, Kathy Charmatz's idea, the methodology that instead of entering a research project or an endeavor thinking about what do I want to find or what is my hypothesis, instead asking broad open questions so that the population that I'm studying can talk about their lives um, and talk about these practitioners' experiences, which from the talk earlier today is really relevant to um, what we are able to do here at Iowa State. So I'm going to talk through a few initial findings. Um, first of all, gender definitely does matter based on my 16 participants' experiences and what they talked about with me so far. And just to cover three specific ways. One is thinking about technological or mechanical literacies. And I use literacy in the way my field uses it in writing studies, that to accomplish our goals, we have to learn ways to do that, whether it be reading and writing, or for some of my participants, driving a tractor and welding. So for some of my participants who have gone through farming internships or even grew up on farms, there were very gendered coded ways about how they did not get to learn how to use a tractor or did not get to learn how to do sort of task-based welding. So farmers in our community are faced with either earning a tractor mechanics degree at DMAC or just trying to find folks in the community who they can meet to teach them these sorts of things. But they de definitely talk about gendered ways um, there is limited access to those skills. Um, also this idea of strategic masculinity, that there's a trend in my findings so far that women farmers at times will ask someone they know who presents as masculine to do something for them that they've faced barriers finding them, been able to do themselves. Whether it's buying a greenhouse from Craigslist or getting someone at an auto shop to talk to them and take them seriously, this idea of invoking strategic masculinity has recurred. Um, then also, mentoring and networks are obviously really, really important to all of us in our professional lives. And for traditionally marginalized populations, such as women farmers, this is very important. So sort of thinking, um, a lot of women are thinking about how that works. Particip participants in my study are also thinking about food as a feminist issue and women in the food system and the ways that um, we have gendered expectations for our food, gendered expectations for our farmers. They describe farmers market experiences of folks assuming um, different identity markers for them with gender based on the sort of food that they are selling. So if you know anyone who's a woman farmer, please encourage them to participate in my study and thank you for listening.